Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, and thank you to all of you that are joining us today. My name is Melissa Rogers, and I'm the Vice President of Business Development for Heritage Property Management Services. And here at Heritage, we really pride ourselves with being able to provide you access to educational resources and reputable vendors. So for those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. We usually have these classes in an in-person environment, obviously due to our recent circumstances. We've now kind of uh, engaged a virtual environment for all of this to work, and we do enjoy the amount of engagement that we get from you even in this new environment. So, um, if you haven't had the opportunity, uh, for those of you that are joining us today live, if you haven't had the opportunity to take a look um, at some of the other opportunities that we have, uh, educationally speaking, please feel free to visit our website for more information. If you go to heritageproperty.com and select the homeowner resources tab in the upper left corner, you will be able to see all of the information that we house as a company that is available to all of you. And one of the things that's really, really great is not only do we provide educational resources for our board members, we really, really want to push the content and the information available so that all of you as board members can create new community and can create some volunteerism within your community. And we hope that you can utilize these resources as additional items that help people feel comfortable in being able to spare some of their time and join the board. That said, today's class, we are talking all about insurance. Uh, it is budget season for most of the property managers right now. And so as such, we wanted to be able to give you enough information to get your budget season started uh, off on a good foot this year. And so with that being said, uh, we are joined today by Willis Tower, Watson, and M. Roper, uh, who are our heritage's insurance partners uh, for the industry. Uh, while we will not be exploring community specific topics, the goal for today is to explain the process of insurance and how it best covers you and your association. Okay, a couple of housekeeping items for today. This event is being recorded. And for those of you who are joining us live today, you will receive a copy of the slides as well as the video recording. Um, for those of you that are joining us on replay, you found us on our YouTube channel and for that we appreciate you. Uh, all of you are in listen only mode for Today, so please submit any questions in the Q&A section. The question box is in the upper uh, right hand corner of your screen currently and we do ask that you do hold these questions that you may have until after the presentation has been completed. We'd like to do the presentation first and then have some Q&A on the side. So your Q&A is going to happen through the text. Um, thank you again for all of you joining us today. I now turn this over to Daniel with Willis Howard Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. And again, thank you to Heritage, our great partner here with allowing us to speak uh, on their behalf and give you some updates on the insurance marketplace. Um, we'd like to focus today on some of the COVID-19 impacts and what that has and how it relates to you and your other board members and your associations. I'm also joined by uh, Art Illinets. Uh, the Vice President of Customer Success for and Broker to talk about uh, what he's seeing in the marketplace as well and how some of the uh, influx of issues in the current very turbulent environment is affecting all of the uh, insurance lines of coverage for property and casualty and some financial executive lines. We also have Bill McDaniel. He's the leader of our risk control and claim advocacy practice here in the Southeast. He will be joining us towards the end for more proactive tips around COVID-19 impacts, being proactive, risk control, loss prevention, and, and other basic questions relating to how do you best protect you, your association, and your, um, your associations and members from any kind of liability or losses. So uh, we can move on now. I'll give a brief overview of what we plan to cover today. I do like for today to be collaborative. So if there's a burning question or something I'm really uh, missing, you know, feel free to submit into the Q&A and we can address that as we go through. Um, the overall context of today is to prepare you 
for how the environment's reacting to COVID-19 from an insurance coverage standpoint and how that will affect you heading into certain renewals and also impact some of your coverages. Uh, that's the goal uh, here as we, we work through. Uh, Melissa, if you go to the next slide, please. So again, like I said, we'll give you a high level, probably move through. We've got a robust presentation today. Um, don't want to go through every single line and bore everyone to death. Again, I was chatting with Melissa and Danielle before this, and insurance could be quite dry, uh, but we're going to try to make it as fun as usual if we're in person. We would probably have a little more uh, interaction and be able to, to liven it up some, but we'll do our best today. Uh, through this whole network of teams and uh, the virtual world that we're living in now. Uh, we're going to give a high level of the overall market conditions, line by line commentary on certain coverage lines that affect you, your forecast, your associations, and your members, and then how has COVID-19 affected the already hardening marketplace? How is it going to affect it? Do we see long-term effects? And what can you do right now to prevent any further issues related to that? Uh, and then strategies for dealing with upcoming renewals, besides relying on your great team there at Heritage and in broker to assist you with different coverages and costs and looking at deductible options and different terms and conditions. Also, what can you do to get out in front of these to have them put to rest earlier and sooner rather than later? And then lastly, we'll take questions and talk about the proactive ways to mitigate the exposure to risk or loss due to COVID-19. Um, Melissa, if you go to the first slide for me. So uh, COVID-19, I think this is probably the number one social media tweeted news word hashtag uh, probably ever utilized, uh, especially for 2020. Uh, we hope it quickly for the sake of everyone, their safety and for financial impacts. Uh, we learn from it, but it quickly comes uh, a past uh, use term as, as quick as possible. The difficult news is that it will be the largest single catastrophe to impact the property, which is what PNC stands for, industry, without any legislative or judicial curveballs that aren't related to a catastrophe, natural type of event. So usually you'll hear we have a natural catastrophe, a hurricane, a tsunami, earthquakes, you know, Hurricane Katrina, Superstorm Sandy, um, wildfires in California, all those things are nature driven. Uh, this, of course, is different. It's a pandemic uh, related to a virus, uh, sickness, and things of that nature, which cause different kind of coverages, if any, to come into play and also create some difficulties because this is not something that most insurance companies and underwriters have dealt with uh, in the past or very few have or have a strategy around it. So if you'll see there, AIG and Chubb, who are very large international brokerages, two of the largest, um, have cited this as the largest single event. Um, they estimate now at this point, as of the end of April, between 40 and $80 billion worth of losses uh, to come out of this. So we'll gradually erode um, the financial surplus they have, the financial investments, things of that nature uh, for these large insurance companies if the losses or things are actually deemed to being covered and not denied. Um, the modern estimates of Lloyd's of London, which is an excess and surplus lines written uh, across for any non-domestic market, actually puts us at a higher um, estimate of $107 billion for what they will see. So, uh, you know, large numbers, uh, already with the economic uncertainty we're facing uh, are you know, going to create a turbulent environment moving forward for coverage. Uh, some of the lines it's impacting along all global geographies throughout the world. Uh, property would be number one, business interruption, which apply to uh, you and your uh, risk and exposure out there that Heritage helps you cover uh, through placements. Property, of course, and business interruption would be be unable to complete your business and continue operations. The good news is for associations and people that are handling uh, basic of uh, these types of industries within the real estate market and around condos, townhomes, and homeowners, uh, business interruption, we're still able to actually, more important than ever, to be able to work from home, to be able to access our environments and things of that nature. So um, we've also seen, of course, multiple events canceled. So some of, you know, the different associations here and the different organizations have uh, 
you know, spring festivals, beer festivals, different things like that all canceled. A lot of that is recoverable if there was a lot of money or front, front costs put into those if you have a special events policy. Again, we don't see that being a large exposure here. Um, travel, of course, was impacted, uh, not an issue, trade credit. Uh, workers' compensation is yet to be determined um, how this is legislated for who's deemed to be at fault for those folks that actually contract COVID-19 or infected and have complications or medical bills or aren't able to work. Um, the majority of the lines we'll see that will be towards the bottom there are directors and officers. So if it's deemed uh, you know, this can be any kind of suit brought against the directors or officers of the board for not acting accordingly or someone feels that there's was a negligence and mismanagement there. Uh, that's yet to be determined how they're covered, but we are seeing these this line of coverage be the most impacted. If you had employees, which is not an issue here for discrimination, termination, furloughs, reductions in salaries, those could be uh, leads to a lawsuit. And then cyber our coverage, of course, with everyone working from home, accessing more virtual worlds, it's just we're doing today. Uh, of course, we have a lot of nefarious criminals out there, uh, actors and different things of that nature that are using this to their advantage to siphon off information, to cause ransomware issues, hacking, and other things like that. Uh, the last one will be environmental, related to pollution, for any kind of cleanup or spillage, uh, things of that nature. We, this is relating back to maybe fungus or things and spores and different kind of virus related issues within buildings. Um, again, it's not deemed a lot of these were had the uh, issues with asbestos back in the 80s and early 90s where underwriters were very keen and aware of this and have written in certain exclusions to avoid this type of coverage which would not apply here. So, so the goal is to really be uh, proactive and getting out in front of your renewals and just to minimize the disruption to your balance sheets which is stated there as much as possible and make underwriters comfortable with what's being put in place to protect you and your associations um let's move on to the next slide for us so the good news um insurance companies large brokerages large uh, reinsurance companies did a great job of uh, our pretty great job of doing funding and financial investments and things of that nature back in the mid 14 and 15 and 16 and started to right the ship, so to speak, is what we've heard this utilized uh, most in putting rating increases on most of their renewals. And so that's kind of built up enough of a well-capitalized industry uh, with 800 billion of surplus to cover catastrophe losses and losses like this that are deemed unforeseeable and that is the one good thing that we don't see any kind of solvency issues uh, moving forward not at this moment um, most pnc insurers have conservative investment portfolios and have done a great job of diversifying those so i think that that is the beneficial part is that insurance companies are not rolling up their doors or not having issues covering these claims and or other potential claims uh, moving forward um, melissa if you go to the next slide please so um, like I said, we'll move through these first few slides rather quickly, but the underlying causes of the hard market, which is what you'll hear a lot right now with the insurance world is still persisting. Uh, started, I'd say back in 18 and 19, we really saw this just begin to become a real talking point and issue of not having the right rates charged for the exposures out there and we'll get into the causes for some of that but a string of natural catastrophes from 17 to 18 uh, we called it the him effect hurricanes um, harvey irma and maria were the large three that hit um, and caused a lot of loss creep uh, a lot of tail coverage a lot of continuous cleanup and non-property uh, cat losses around the world as well such as fires and tornadoes and hail uh, we had in the 80s, a large, large, um, similar hard market all through the 80s and early 90s. So then we entered into the early 2000s, and there was, you know, the world was doing good. We were, you know, everything was going well. And so we started seeing a lot of underwriters, a lot of insurance companies enter into the market, creating competition, and everyone drove those property rates down and a lot of rating on liability 
on excess coverage and DNO down to afford more uh, competitive rates, which are now creeping the other way due to the fact of probably some poor underwriting and poor predictions. Uh, the next one would be social inflation. Uh, we're seeing all this through liability verdicts, you know, multi, it's not unfortunately um, seven figure verdicts are becoming some of the norm. Uh, we're seeing a lot of class action lawsuits, things that are just destroying the portfolios of insurance companies for a certain line of coverage, which has been mainly around the general liability and the excess and umbrella market. Um, we also had historically low interest rates for years. It lowered the investment income, and that was a little bit harder for uh, insurance and underwriters to charge the right amount for rebuilding back certain properties and cause things to be undervalued, which is now being a major talking and sticking point. It really applies to a lot of the associations that have properties such as a clubhouse or a common area to be rebuilt or to be adequately um, evaluated from a reconstruction cost uh, being a major talking point of topic and we'll get into that as well. Uh, we can go to slide five for us, Melissa. Uh, this one is just showing you again what I stated earlier on the previous two slides that the majority of insurance companies, uh, our brokerage Willis Towers Watson has actually a team that that's pretty much all they do every day is monitor the um, a and M ratings, the best rating, a best ratings of these insurance companies financially, make sure they're stable, who are we placing our business with, who are you placing your coverage with to make sure that you don't have issues of insolvency, that in fact you do have to enter a claim and uh, you always want your insurance company to be there and to pay those claims and be adequately capitalized to do so. So as you see now, positive and stable outlooks for the majority of those. Uh, we, our firm uh, in most, insurance companies you would want to place your business with try to make an A rating and above, A plus. And so as you see there that there's very few that are in the red um, that may yet to be determined as this year 2020 continues on. Um, I'm not, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news this entire presentation, but we are seeing uh, a lot of expectations and forecasting for a rough hurricane season due to the Gulf being the warmest they said it had been in about five to six years. So a natural catastrophe such as that could be on the horizon. Let's hope uh, that it doesn't happen, but another issue that could cause an unstable outlook for these insurance carriers. 